All right, before we go outside and complete the install, just some quick comments on these. Uh, for the LED bulbs, I've tried a few different ones. Um, what I've kind of settled on is this brand Oxido. They're widely available on eBay, Amazon, and elsewhere. And it's not because they're the only ones out there. You can also get some pretty high quality, like Sylvania ones, for example, at the auto parts store. But these are fairly affordable and widely available. And in my experience, they seem to be fairly long lasting. This is a 3157. Very, very common for a tail light and turn signals in many vehicles. This one here is a 7443. Now, if you're looking at the glass bulb ones, they don't look anything alike. Uh, this one here always has a plastic base. This one here is a, an all glass uh, construction. But if you're buying LED equivalents, sometimes they do. This here is the 3157 in LED. And this here is a 7443. Now, notice these bases look very similar in size. They're not quite exactly the same width, but they're very close. However, this one is much longer and it doesn't have the same clip retention system. So if I try to install this one, which was designed to replace a 7443 in a socket designed for a 3157, um, it might go in, it might make contact, it might not. And this one here is actually a little bit fatter for one thing. And that could actually jam the clips out. And because it doesn't have the same socket retention mechanism, uh, it might fall out even if I get it to go in and work. So. Just pay attention to those little details like that when you're shopping around because installing the wrong thing could result in an unreliable fixture and then the light goes up and you may not even know it. Another thing you can do on the bench that may save you some grief later is just do a quick test and see if they're coming on or not. So low beam, high beam. Interestingly, in the target vehicle we're going to be installing these in, it uses 3157s for single filament lamps like the reverse lights and just ignores the low beam. Go figure. Interestingly, because this is bipolar, I can flip the pins and I still get the same result. That, of course, is in comparison to the old original bulb. Yeah. And then just to check these. So this one you do have to get oriented correctly or it won't light. But there we go. So let's head out to the car and get a few of these put in.
just a little epilogue before we wrap up today's episode. Once you change your outside LEDs, you might want to turn your attention to the interior. Uh, regarding dome lights and things like that, we have a previous episode called Unconventional LED Lighting that may be interesting, but when it comes to your dash, uh, shift indicators, things like that, there are lots of options. In many cases, you're looking at OE bulbs that are sometimes pretty tiny, uh, things like this or even this, and they usually have this blue vinyl cover on them to try and shift the warm white uh, color temperature a little bit higher. Uh, once you install LEDs, of course, that's not as much of an issue, but... And again, it doesn't really look blue so much in the dash. It's just kind of a high color temperature white because the warm white is being filtered through that little vinyl cap that's on there. This here would have originally installed in a socket like this, which then pushed in on the back side of the uh, instrument cluster. But there are options for changing that. They don't all work the exact same way. This here is one LED example. Well, here's an older style that just uses a conventional... Uh, is that like a three or a five millimeter LED? There we go. So, yeah. I mean, it puts out a decent amount of little light, but it tends to be a little bit focused towards the outside. That may or may not work, depending on your application. Here's another one here. We'll probably have to try this one both ways also. This one here is much brighter. And even though it doesn't have, has no side dispersion at all, that may not be a problem. Or one thing I've even done with these, that would also swap into a socket like this, is I've sometimes taken a bit of clear silicone and just applied a bubble on there and let it cure overnight. But that's not to say you couldn't change the color if you wanted to. You want to change your, if your dash has kind of a whitish layout and you want to change it to more of an orange, you can certainly do that just using alternate bulbs. Or even, like some modern vehicles, you could go with red. So there's no limitation to your options. But some experimentation may be required. For one thing, most uh, traditional dashes, the bulbs do not all orient the same way. So in one of them, up may be positive, and another down may be positive, and another left may be positive, right is positive. And so you kind of just got to install them, do a quick test fit, um, see which ones are actually working, and then mark out the ones that are not, flip them around, and then you should be golden. Uh, personally, I kind of like the look. Uh, it, in some cases, it can be subtle, but it is definitely distinct and hopefully very long-lasting. So have fun with those ideas, and we hope to see you next time on Workshop Quick Takes. Has anyone seen my phone?